Hi, my name is Andrew McLaren, and I'm going to help you with the solubility rules for AP Chemistry in the year 2023, as well as how to check it in the future years. Um, because when I took the test like 10 or so years ago, um, the rules were a little bit different than they currently are. And they're a lot easier now. You only really need to memorize four ions are always soluble. And we'll go over some example problems because it's not really about that memorization but precipitation, that's kind of relevant to a number of prob problems. And we'll talk about the focus of solubility really on the test and how to check this and how it's changed over time in the future years, okay? So this is what the old system looks like where you had all these different ions, their solubility and their exceptions. Um, sometimes it's written out as like a list of steps that you go through. You don't need to memorize all that stuff. It's just mindless and it doesn't really help you that much. So, um, the AP test has moved away from having kids memorize what is precipitating with what. They said basically these four are always going to be soluble, so they won't form the precipitant. Um, so you basically need to know how to recognize these and in those problems know, okay, well that's not going to be the precipitant. But that isn't actually even the main focus on these problems. The main focus is more on drawing representations of precipitation and being able to represent ions and amount of moles and that type of stuff. So while this is still somewhat helpful to these problems, it isn't a big focus on the test. And they almost always tell you which one is actually precipitating in the problem. Um, so it's not like you have to figure out what's precipitating. That's like not really the case, at least with the um, like free response questions. They tend to have you using precipitation as a concept um, to do some sort of modeling. So we're going to start, first of all, with not a solubility example, but I just wanted to highlight how you can see in the problem how they give you a lot of times the state of matter as well as the chemical formula. And here they didn't tell you like what solid silicone was or hydrogen gas was, but if you read lower down in the problem, you can usually get that information from the context of the problem. So that's a big thing in the test is that you don't really need to know oftentimes what formulas are or how things are kind of written. They've been kind of moving away from that. And you can see this problem actually is a really good example of how they use precipitation on, on the test. You've got a couple, um, two different things that are dissolving and there's some precipitant, there's, um, and some stuff that's dissolved into the solution, some ions actually in the solution. And so you can actually draw in to show the relative solubility. And that's much more important in this exam than knowing like what is precipitating, what is not precipitating, is just kind of knowing how that stuff is represented in models. And so you can kind of see the um, a couple of the standards here where you need to be able to represent interactions between compounds and concentrations, you know, parts of a solution and a precipitant. And so that's a really important thing is just kind of conceptually being able to understand how to represent these things um, and like draw in like different number of ions to show things being more or less soluble. Um, I believe that there should be like the same amount of this stuff um, here, but then there's like less ions being given off, something kind of like that, right? And then this is a good example of what the actual precipitation problems look like, um, where they give you, like I wanted to highlight in the other problems, they give you the formulas. Um, and so you don't really need to do all like the, what does this compound look like? What's going on with the charges and stuff? They just give that to you. Um, they're not giving you the, like, that this is sodium carbonate. They just write out the formula. And so they're trying to really simplify things out for you. And look, they even write out that the precipitant, like what it is, the formula and everything for you, they label it. That's not really like the focus of the test. That used to be a lot bigger. Like when I took the test, you did need to know which one of these will be the precipitant. Um, but that's not really the case anymore. Um, at least for a majority of the problems, I haven't seen a single one in all the time that I've been tutoring over the last two years for this test. And that's like, you know, it's been quite a few problems that I've done with kids. So you can feel pretty safe that they're going to not expect you to know like, oh, this one will precipitate with that one. That's not the focus of precipitation. It's more about how do you draw this 
and understand like how do you draw a spectator ion um and then when you draw out like a net ionic equation how does that relate to the actual ions in solution in the drawn model that's much much bigger on the test so a big focus for solubility is being able to understand the effect of ions on a solution there's a couple different aspects to this like how it conducts electricity um, how it might depress or elevate the boiling point or, or freezing point, you don't need to be able to do the calculations. A lot of teachers will do like colligative properties where you actually need to know the, the number of ions and how that affects the boiling point or the freezing point. Um, that's not really included on the AP test on, in terms of the math, but you do need to understand that conceptually as well as a couple other aspects. And it's all kind of part of 3.8. And then if you're wanting to understand like more specifically with it, what's within 3.8, what they expect you to be able to do on the test, you may have some teachers that will write out like this SPQ3 uh, <laughs> standard that I have here, like just right up, like above me right here. Um, and those you can check. All that stuff is actually fairly easy for you to navigate. And if you just Google the AP Chem course description PDF, you should be able to find this. So I'm going to just do that really quick. Um, I also wanted to say that I'm going to be doing a follow-up video on how to do these um, representation of solution problems uh, because they're very, very common on the AP test. But if we just Google this, actually you need to just Google course description to get the correct link. Um, and this will take you to the AP Central College Board website. And on here they have a link to a PDF. And this PDF contains an, all, uh, all of the standards for everything. So you can see, I really think that um, this is kind of a good thing because you can see the main unit's names. But they also have within that, they have all, a ton of different like subsections that you can look at. And um, of course, a lot of students aren't going to look at all of the detail in here. But I, I do think it's worthwhile to look at some of this stuff. And control F, you can also look at like solubility. And that is super useful for being able to look up specific parts of, of the test and know what's going on around solubility um, and just see where that is in this PDF. I would definitely recommend all students do that just so they know what parts they're responsible for, um, for a specific concept. Thank you for McLearning with me. I've got a few more offers that I'd like to let you know about. And remember, like and subscribe. For each video on YouTube, I am making an interactive version using HP5. These will be for sale on Podia. And if you click on the link in the video, you should be able to go directly to that product. I also have two demos I'm going to be linking so you can kind of see what they, these products look like. Um, so I would recommend checking out those demos. I also offer one on one remote tutoring through Wizant. Please use the links that I have linked below. That way I can get 100% of the uh, hourly rate as opposed to 75. Each video also has a link for my Patreon and you can join at the $3 level to get some resources I use for tutoring and, or to support the channel. And I also have a $5 raffle level, which you could either get some free online tutoring or five, uh, interactive lessons for free. You choose which ones. And then I also have my Teachers Pay Teachers, which has some old lessons that I made from when I used to be a teacher. I may be adding to that. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you learned something.